And it's a Stratasys U-print. Stratasys U-print. Find the filament for that, or come up with a completely new solution. Okay, um, so I know we have a few students in quarantine, and that may be an understatement. Because uh, it's been a few years since I've taught a class this small. Oh, hey. Thank you. Welcome to class. Um, yeah. I was just saying we have, we have a few students in quarantine. So let me uh, shut this door so I'm not yelling out in the hallway. Okay, so uh, this week marks a transition to new topics. This is where we are now discussing uh, design and the idea that we have the ability to actually design stuff. So far we've talked about failure, uh, a lot of different failure modes, failure mechanisms mostly to do with stress. Uh, but stress is only one of the many conditions that can cause failure in a system regardless. Um, what we're talking about this week is the idea of linkages and components that transmit power from some kind of an actuator. So you have an actuator such as a motor, a, uh, this could be a piston, it could be a hydraulic cylinder, uh, it could be an electric motor, it could be uh, something of that sort. It's some kind of actuator, goes into a linkage, and then produces some kind of desirable output. Uh, this may be closing a doorway, this may be opening a valve. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, so with this sequence here, um, how do we really design a four bar linkage or something, which we're, we're focusing in this class on four bar linkages. How do you design a four bar linkage so that um, you can correctly take the actuator action, a force, uh, a torque, something, and, and produce the output that you want out of it, okay? So what we'll do for this class is we're gonna say, um, we're going to give an example. You want a door that opens and closes. Okay? That's what you want. How are we going to design a four bar linkage around that? Well, um, what four bar linkages can produce, they can produce three of the following members, okay? They can produce a timing mechanism. This is where the movement of the system has some kind of a timing. Uh, usually when you have that, your input to your system is your rocker and your output is your crank, something like that, a rotational timing, okay? Um, you can produce a, an angular displacement. Okay, usually for this, then your crank will be the input and your rocker will be your output and your rocker will rotate between two distinct angles. But you also have a third option, which is a trajectory. Okay, in a trajectory, um, the coupler bar that connects the crank to the rocker actually traces out a very unique shape. Um, every single four bar linkage has a unique coupler curve. And some of them are really weird. Uh, so for example, if this is my four bar linkage, I have something that looks like this. It's located on this 
ground linkage. Okay, and I were to rotate this, and I were to put a pin, or a pen right here, and I were to trace the motion of that coupler with that pen, it would trace a very unique shape. The closer I get to this crank, the more circular that shape would become. That ends up rotating about here, but... Drat. Let me try that again. The closer I get to this point right here, the more circular this becomes. The closer I get to the rocker over here, the more this begins looking like this. Somewhere in the middle though, it's actually gonna merge from this shape to this shape. And so if I were to put a pen right here and have it trace on the paper, it may trace out a loop that looks like this. Just for this particular forward linkage. You get unique trajectories for your couplers based on where you position them. Now, you can make this even more unique and have some kind of an addition on here. Maybe your, maybe your coupler curve isn't a flat bar. Maybe it's a triangular piece like this. And you put your pen right there. Now this is gonna tr trace out something that may look something like that. And it's very erratic. <laughs> um, to try and predict the shape of that trajectory involves math that absolutely no one wants to do. Uh, not even in 2020 where we have the ability to plug in software and check it out. Nobody does that, okay? If you wanna know what the shape of that coupler curve is, you throw it into a solid modeling program like SolidWorks and you look at it. You put a tracer down, you follow it, okay? Um, it's too, it's too high level. I mean, it's graphical interface. This is all geometry, but it's a lot of arc sines and cosines and this rotates and then it, it just isn't very pretty. Uh, if you were to put this into some other kind of software, it, it does it for you a lot easier, okay? So these are the three types of outputs that a four bar linkage can do. And these are the three reasons why people create four bar linkages. Um, oftentimes it's to transfer power, but it's to transfer power over a specific angular displacement, transfer power at a certain time, or transfer power in a certain trajectory, uh, if that makes any sense. So if we're designing a door that opens and closes, which one of these three are we going to be choosing to use to design our four bar linkage? We're probably gonna use this one, right? Okay, when you design for angular displacement, the, okay, the interesting thing about designing for these two is the best way to design them is to plug all of your system into like SolidWorks and then adjust your linkages and see how it changes your trajectory, see how it changes your shape, see how it changes the time, okay? <laughs> so really, this one is the only one that has real actual design involved in it because you do have to be careful about geometry. If you just start plugging stuff into SolidWorks and checking for angular displacement, yeah, you might get it eventually, but this is a lot harder. Um, so this is kind of why this becomes a, an interesting model because it lets you study uh, the mechanisms behind a four bar linkage a little bit better rather than just plug into a software and figure out what's going on. Is this acceptable? Um, so here, uh, before we can really move on with this design, I wanna point out that there are two very unique positions that occur on the four bar linkage. Okay, so let's take our ground linkage and we're gonna take our crank, it's gonna be located this way, and we're gonna create our coupler and it's gonna be parallel to and in line with, collinear with the crank. And at the end over here, there's the rocker. Okay, now, this doesn't seem like, you know, maybe this is an interesting configuration, but when you're designing for angular displacement, this angle right here is at a maximum when this condition occurs. So when the crank and the coupler 
are collinear, you have maximum rocker angular uh, angle, okay, relative to the ground link. Similarly, I'm going to try to draw my links the same length. <laughs> that is not going to turn out nicely. So my, I had to rotate this a little bit. Um, I was falling over while drawing this, so uh, that's my excuse. Um, I wish I could just rotate this. That'd be nice, but nope. What this represents right here is this is the minimum angle that that rocker is going to experience. Okay, so maximum occurs at this location, minimum occurs at this location. We can use this to define what our maximum and minimum locations are. Now, for bar linkage, you end up having to do a lot of, okay, how, how long do I want this to be? What do I want this to look like? Et cetera, et cetera. And some of that does depend on power transmission. Um, if you have, a high torque motor, um, then you can have really, really long cranks. And it's not going to hurt you because it can transmit that power. Every force that is exerted by that crank, uh, the, the distance away from the axis of the axle uh, is the torque. So the longer your crank, the more torque is going to be required by the motor to move it. Um, if you have a high torque motor, you can have a longer crank, and that's not going to be an issue. For a low torque motor, you do need to have a shorter crank, and yeah, you do have less power output that comes from it. Um, so there are some conditions. You may look at your rocker and you may say, well, what I'm going to do with my rocker is I'm actually going to attach a pin here and it's going to be a, mounted on a slider. Um, and as the pin moves in the rocker, it pushes the slider forward and backward to some distance, uh, which is what you get out of angular displacement too. It's one and the same. Um, you could do something like that. Maybe you need it to be a certain length. Um, but you do have a lot of arbitrary conditions that come along with four-bar linkages. When I tell you design a four-bar linkage, you're going to have to make a number of assumptions as to how long your link lengths are going to be. Okay, so we're going to say we want to design for angular displacement. On a doorway, what kind of angular displacement are we looking at? What's reasonable for a, a little hatch door? Zero to about 100 or 90. Zero to 90. That sounds good. Okay, so we'll say... Um, minimum angle is zero degrees and our maximum angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so that means at, at zero degrees, oh shoot, I gotta say one more thing about this. By the way, um, the amount of torque that's being put into this actually has an infinite power transmission at this location because any little bit of torque represents a small vertical distance and it is almost entirely transmitted in, into rotation of this component. That also said any push on this component like this, any torque on that component is going to be directly transmitted through this component and it will not translate to a torque here. So fun things about these kinds of systems. Yeah. Well, that top drawing Bar on the, the small bar on the left and the long bar. Is it attached, this one? Are they attached to the end or are they attached in that center point? It's attached at the center point. It's like this, but the problem is that they're on top of each other. Um, so, you know, you can imagine like this is a bolt and that's two boards rotating on each other like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of didn't do any favors by drawing a weird system like that first. <laughs> But 
So we're gonna say zero to 90 degrees. We do have this weird power transmission thing that occurs at the maximum and minimum angles. And that is because these are in line and any force transmitted through this member axially does not produce a torque here. Because this is a simple linkage, it can only carry forces that go in the direction of the linkage. That's what has to happen. So this force gets transmitted here and it is in line. So we're gonna go ahead and draw this in a zero degree configuration. I'll draw my, um, I'll draw my ground link. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my rocker link. My rocker is at zero degrees. Um, I'm gonna just draw some crank and the coupler has to be in line with it. Well, that's gross. Um, all four of my bars are on top of each other. Um, that's actually not so good because if I exert a force on this doorway in this direction, uh, there is no way that coupler can exert any of that force along its axis. This actually would cause torque on the system. It's a weird configuration when they're all aligned like that. It actually does cause torque on the crank. This is not the strongest configuration. So it is nice to not have them all aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and add 60 degrees to this. And basically what I'm going to do for that is I'm gonna rotate my ground down 60 degrees. Okay, so I've got my rocker that is now at, this is 60 degrees. It's still located at the same angle. But now when it's at its minimum angle, I've got my crank and I've got my coupler like this. Okay, we're gonna keep the ground line at the same position, at same 60 degrees, and we're gonna draw this just in reverse. Okay, so now I've got this rocker is this length, I'll rotate it up about like that. And then this will go down here like this, and then that, okay? So this is rotating between 60 and 150 degrees. Probably should have rotated at 45 degrees, but hindsight's 2020. All right, so that's my, those are my two configurations that I'm gonna be drawing between. Now for this one, we have crank plus coupler, and this one we have coupler minus crank. That's the length between this ground linkage and the end point of that rocker. This distance stays the same, this distance stays the same, this distance changes. And the angles in our triangle all change too. So the question is, where do we go from here? Well, this is where we have to start making some assumptions about the geometry of our system, okay? What we're gonna start out with is by saying, well, how long do we want a rocker to be? What's a good length for a rocker? All night long. <laughs> okay, all night long is a good answer. Unfortunately, it's not a numerical answer. Um, what, is the, what is the numerical quantification of uh, all night long? It's probably some amount of time, hours. 
It was probably in hours. If only had we had a clock system we could use to decide that. Person conversion to hours to hours to inches? Yeah. We could try to figure that out next. Yeah. I don't really want to do that. I'm not much of a in, in yeah. So what would be a good length of distance for a rocker? No, <laughs> I do not want a system that small. Um, I mean, that would be like... Five inches. No, let's at least go with like five. Three feet. Three feet is a good distance, because then it's at least like this. One foot. One foot, 12 inches. Yeah. Okay, somebody just... Sean, you're the, you're the deciding vote. You could have picked any of the lengths that everyone said today. Okay. This is your pop quiz. Mm -hmm. You're being graded. Hmm? One, foot. one foot? Okay. So our rocker. Rocker is equal to 12 inches. No, no, when I was in grad school, um, the thing is. A crank rocker system is actually the design of an elliptical machine. Is you have a crank on the back end and you have this rocker that is attached, it's actually flipped upside down, but it's attached to the arm things. That's all an elliptical machine is. It's this giant crank rocker machine. It's really cool. Um, so 12 inches is not super long for a rocker. Um, okay. So now we know what this distance is. We know that this is 12 inches, both sides. Okay, um, can we figure out what this length, this length, and this length is based on that distance? We have one distance and two angles. Heck no. Um, you can figure out something from it, just not very much. So how long do you want the crank to be? Five inches. Five inches? All right, I can go with that. Okay. Now, question is, can we connect a five inch crank somehow to a 12 inch rocker using some kind of a linkage? Well, what I, what I did um, for the other class and what I suggest doing is, it, it's sometimes difficult if we say, okay, let's make the coupler be six inches, we can't make this system anymore because five plus six inches doesn't even equal 12 inches. So having a crank right here, you wouldn't be able to get the coupler to connect to the end. So we have to have a coupler length that is at least seven inches long, but probably a little bit longer. So one thing you can do is you can say, how long do you want this distance to be? And how long do you want this distance to be? So let's start by saying this one. How long do you want this distance to be? Or we'll go with this one. How long do you want this distance to be? Nine. Nine inches, okay. So Kepler minus crank equals nine inches. You already know what the crank distance is. So your coupler is going to be equal to 14 inches. Simple math. Okay. If you wanted to pick these two distances, you could solve for what you, your crank distance is too. If you wanted to pick those. Okay, so now we have these three distances. We can figure out the fourth distance from this. 
and that will fully define our four-bar linkage system. Okay? So we know this distance here is 9 inches. If we were to drop a line that is perpendicular to the ground line, this now forms two right triangles. One right triangle has a hypotenuse of 9 inches. One right triangle has a hypotenuse of 12 inches. We do not know what these two angles are. All we know on this triangle is that it's 9 inches, and then there are, there, there's, there's, there's stuff. We do, we can use this triangle to figure out what this distance is right there. This angle here is 30 degrees, okay, because this one's 150. 150, so this one has to be 30. So if we take 12 times the sine of 30 degrees, we will have this distance here. What is 12 times the sine of 30 degrees? I know this in my head, but I feel like I'm going to sit. I feel like I'm going to say it, and it's going to be super dumb. Thanks, Walker. <laughs> so this distance right here is negative 11. Um, so what we're... Uh, six. This distance here is 6. Okay. Now, since we know two link lengths, and we know that this is a right triangle, we can actually solve for what this angle is, and we can solve for what this distance is. Okay. Since this is a right triangle, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We do not know what this side is, so we'll say a squared plus 6 squared is equal to 9 squared. So a squared, well, a is equal to the square root of 9 squared minus 6 squared. I'm going to throw this out of my pocket again, aren't I? And this is equal to 6.708 inches. Okay? So this is 6.708. Sweet. This distance here represents 12 cosine of 30 degrees. Yes. So 12 cosine of 30 degrees is what? Ten point four. Ten point four what? There's more decimals. Come on, I put three decimals here. Three nine two. Okay. So now we have two parts of a line. We know this distance over here is 6.708. We know this distance over here is 10.392. That is not drawn proportionally, but when you add them together, you get 17.100. Ooh, that's nice. That, that's nice. Okay, so now our ground link is equal to 17.100 inches. Question, does this mechanism exist? Well, in order for us to figure that out, we need to follow uh, Grashoff's existence condition. Grashoff's existence condition states the shortest link plus the longest length is less than or equal to the sum of the other two links. What is the shortest link? The crank. What is the longest link? Ground, which is 17.1.
What is the other two links? So this equals 12.1, 22.1, this equals 26. Does this mechanism exist? I'd hope so. We, we designed it so that it existed. Um, we're good to go. Okay. Awesome. All right. So now we're going to take this and uh, we're going to we're going to go visualize what it looks like. Um, let me go grab my connectors so that I can plug into the overhead projector. I'll be right back. It's always fun I'm trying to make this work. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up SolidWorks on my computer, and the goal of what we're trying to do today, oh man, I need a mouse. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new part. Hopefully this trying to stream and uh, do SOLIDWORKS at the same time hopefully doesn't murder my computer. But we'll find out. Let me turn on the mood lighting in here. Are you watching the stream? Yep. It's always weird to me when people are watching the stream while I'm in class. Jackson does that. He always does that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's nice for me because then you can give me feedback person to person. I'm reading the live See, chat and... It's like weird to me when people are watching the stream while I'm in class. <laughs> okay, now I'm very self-conscious. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Dang it. All right, so I'm not going to paint this camera above my head. So what we're going to do right here is, is I'm going to go ahead and draw my four link lengths, which 
in hindsight, I shouldn't have put right behind the projector screen. Very easy enough to remember. There was a 17.1. We had our crank, uh, it's five inches. We had our coupler was. Fourteen inches. Rocker was twelve, and the ground link was seventeen point one. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to preface this with, um, whenever you make things in SolidWorks, uh, genuinely, well, usually you have to make the link longer than the connections because otherwise your connections are on the very edges and you, you try to bolt them and, and they don't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two inches to every one of those links and I'm going to make links two inches too long. Okay, so sketch, sketch. Draw this on the top plane. And I'm going to sketch this in a very interesting way for a reason. So got one of these. That's my rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and dimension this. We'll make this be an inch wide. We'll make this be, we're designing our crank. Uh, this will be seven inches long. Because again, I'm adding two inches to it um, for a reason. Now I have this nice little box here. It's cute. How do I make this go away? Disappear. I'm gonna go ahead and add a circle somewhere over here. This is gonna represent the bolt connection, a revolute joint that connects all of our four bar linkages together. Um, so I have this circle. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a relation not between an arc, but between the center of that circle and the midpoint of this line. I'm gonna make them horizontal, and that's good. Okay, now I'm gonna position the center of this hole. I'm gonna put it in one inch from the edge, as I said, and we'll go ahead and make this be uh, like three eighths of an inch. Okay, yay! Okay, now that I've defined it that way, I'm gonna go ahead and mirror entities. I grab this circle. Ah, oh, shoot. Uh, I got it all on a construction line. Okay, now let's do it. So we'll mirror entities. I'm gonna mirror the circle about this here, and I'll say yes. Okay. And then I will exit sketch. And I'm going to extrude, and it automatically selects the region inside of it, and I'll extrude it quarter of an inch. Say yes, and there's our crank. So I will go ahead and file save as. Go into this class. I already did this in the last class. So, now I'm just doing it again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, I do tend to name things like that. <laughs> So, so that is that is not uncommon for me. <laughs> you know, I didn't bring a Mountain Dew today, so. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is rather than redraw all of these and make you sit through here as I redo this, um, I'm gonna not do that. So let's do 16 inches, exit sketch, File, save as, and this is my coupler. 
go in here, edit sketch, and this is now 14. And I will exit sketch. And this is now my rocker. It's a really boring rocker. And I'll do it one more time for the ground link. Oh. Exit sketch. File, save as ground. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new assembly. And we'll start with a ground link. I'll go ahead and throw it down here. Um, and then I will insert my crank. My coupler. And my rocker. Okay, now uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into view, hide, show, temporary axes, not cameras. And what that'll do is it'll show the center of each one of those holes. So now I'm going to rotate a little bit because it'll make mating easier. Um, Mate that axis to that axis. Good. Mate that axis to that axis. It's good. Mate this axis to this axis. That's good. And then my last one, mate this axis to that axis. And it's good. And that looks kind of like the four bar linkage that we have. Now, these two are in line, but that's fine. Uh, I am going to do one more thing before we step out of here. And I'm going to mate every one of these faces to each other. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that nothing flies away when uh, when we get these going. Okay, so now I got all my mates, and now because of how I mated it, look at that. That's hotness. Now that appears to rotate about 90 degrees, which means we did all of our math right. Job team. I'm going to go ahead, got it from up here. We're going to do a motion study. And when we do a motion study, um, and I was even going to try to spend some time. How do we make this component rotate? No, I don't want to rotate the model. Okay, so I should be able to play this now. Maybe, no, I've never been very good at these. Okay. Picking this one. Yeah, sure, let's do that. Ah. 
Huh? Oh, this one? There it goes, yeah. And it plays a fun noise. Nice. Well, wow, that's that's very angry. I wanted to go slower. Um, let's try that again. Oh yeah, look at that slowness. Yeah. This is how we ride through the hood. At two FPS. Well, you are on your com you are on your comedy genius today. <laughs> okay, so this is um, you can use this. I don't actually remember how, but you can use this uh, to actually track the movement of your system and uh, and be able to figure out how much this is rotating, what it looks like. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Uh, it's because as of right now, you are going to be beginning work on project one. So if I pop up project one, and uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna live stream a grade book. As much fun as that would be. Oh look, fun. So let's go to machine design. Under files, I have uploaded in your project documents, I have uploaded the final project for the robotic leg, including all the due dates. Um, as a first step of this project, you're going to have to create SolidWorks. Uh, for my suggestion to you is you're going to probably have to make a four bar linkage. Okay, now you, when you make a four bar linkage, you can mount things to the four bar linkage. The actual four bar linkage should stay intact, but you can mount things to the four bar linkage to get movement. You need to get a total of seven inches of displacement out of your rocker. How do you do that? Well, you can make the rocker longer and you can just put a simple pin connection. You can put a slider connection. You can do whatever you want. This is never going to load. So let's do this the other way. Uh, ironically, this would have been easier. Um, if this doesn't show up, then I'm leaving. Um, so the total due date for this project is going to be the end of class. This is your final for this class. It will be at eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, robotic movements or, I think I showed you some of this at one point. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll just show you the due dates. Um, so this has to be able to show seven inches of lift. Okay. And that is due two weeks from today. Now, well, two weeks from Wednesday, but for your class, I'm going to make it two weeks from today. So your class can hand it in because you're later. Um, but everybody else who's on the Wednesday one, I will expect to be able to see it in class. Um, if you're not able to show up to class that day, uh, you can email me a picture. Okay, so you've got to start playing around with designing a four bar linkage. And one of your assignments for next week is your job is to sit down in SOLIDWORKS and design something. Design a four bar linkage, it does a certain mechanism. Okay, I'll give you instructions on how to do that when I give you that assignment. I'm gonna try to give it to you before Monday. I hate it when I give you assignments on Monday, but um, it happens. Uh, so the goal is you're going to design a four bar linkage and then you're gonna turn around and finish the design of this four bar linkage. Uh, next week in class, I will expect you to work with your partner 
To finish this, you should be working in groups of two. Uh, we have a bunch of people who are gone here today, so um, I would advise you find a partner who you is who is reliable and who shows up to class, uh, and you who you can get a hold of. Although I don't really have a hard time getting hold of anybody in this class. Um, I think I have most of your cell phone numbers, so. Uh, so pick a partner, get started working on this. You will need a design that has seven inches of lift. It also needs to have a spring in it, okay? At some point, we'll talk about spring design. Um, I don't remember what unit that is. Yes? So what do you mean of seven inches of lift? It's like from zero to Yep, it, all I care about is that you have some kind of motor axle and some kind of ground. At one position, at its maximum distance or whatever, it touches the ground. I don't, I don't even care what this height is. That's the beauty of it. But this maximum position has to move towards the motor axle by seven inches. So that is what lift of seven inches means. Does that make sense? Motor axle is right here. It's like it's representing your hip. Okay, this is going to rotate a full 360 degrees, which means it is prime for making a crank rocker model. Okay, because you can just attach a crank right to the motor and be able to power a rocker from that. Okay. Um, we didn't really talk about crank sliders. Dang it. I should probably give you a video on that next week. Drat. Oh well. Okay, any other questions on this? Yes. You have two quizzes due next week. I haven't given you either of them yet. One of them is a review over the entire course. So you have two quizzes due tonight. One of those quizzes is a formula sheet. My goal is if you, you'll be graded on how thorough and complete your formulas are if you get all the major formulas. I'm not looking for like, did you scan through the book and say everything. If, if it was a formula I made you write in a reading assignment, it's probably an important formula. Um, and if it's a formula that I used repeatedly in class, it's also important. So that's quiz one. Quiz two is you do have design of a fatigue component. As I again, due tonight. Um, next week, you will also have two quizzes. One of them is a review over the course. One of them is going to be a review specifically over this material for four bar linkages and cams and linkages in general. Um, you will have a design problem and a reading assignment due next week also. So I am laying on the homework, but um, the goal is lay on the homework early on in the semester, focus on project later on in the semester. So, okay, any other questions?